1034 that's the special number of the week because that's how much more inventory a home buyer has to look at today compared to today last year we're going to talk about that more but no it's hit or miss consider a city like brockton that has seen inventory grow from 35 units today last year to 50 units today that's a 43 percent increase of inventory levels or newton which has gone from 96 units last year to 125 units today. That's a 30% increase. Framingham, 16 to 27 units in a year, which is a 69% increase. But then you have an area like Winchester, which is 24 units today and had 28 units today last year for a 14% decrease in inventory levels. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot more hit than miss, but real estate market conditions are local, town local, not state local. In this video, we're going to go over the single family condo markets stats in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update. We're also going to talk about some relevant current events. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Don't want to pay two and a half percent of the purchase price when buying a new house? Then take a look at our purchase power plan. In this plan, buyers pay for our services by the hour instead of two and a half or three percent of the purchase price. This can save home buyers possibly tens of thousands of dollars when buying a house. Reach out if you're looking to buy a house and want to save a small fortune in fees. Let's jump into the single family market stats. We are now on the march to 5,000 units. We now have 4,893 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This is 19.8% more houses than were on the market just 28 days ago. We'd have to go back to the week of November 11th in 2022 in order to find a time when we had more single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. And the inventory growth doesn't look that impressive when you compare it to 2022, but compared to that red line, the 2023 year, we now have 1,034 more single family homes on the market when compared to the same week last year, and 297 more houses on the market than compared to the same time back in 2022. Keep in mind that the 2022 inventory run was thanks to a historic rate hike increase, and our inventory levels are higher and going nearly toe to toe. The question becomes where is all this inventory coming from? New listings are down week over week, but still ahead to 2023 levels. This week, we list 1,380 single family homes in the state of Massachusetts. This is 219 units or 18.9% more than the same week in 2023. New listings continue to come in strong. This is where inventory growth is coming from, is sales are consistent, but where all the new sellers are coming from, well, I guess that's the better question that no one really knows. Meanwhile, the four-week rolling average is 1,259 units. This week, we put 1,190 single-family homes under agreement. Now, this is 67 units, or 6% higher than the same week last year. We put 1,123 houses under agreement. It's this imbalance, week after week after week, of new listings and under agreements that is the driving force of that inventory growth. The four-week rolling average is 1,083 units. So when compared to last year's market, New listings were up by 18.9%, while under agreements, they were up by 6%. The pending new listing ratio was 79.3%. We had 1,190 units that went under agreement this week, which compared to 1,501 new listings that came on the market two weeks ago. The 79% is compared to the 81.6% that we saw this week last year, so down slightly year over year. The average for the last four weeks is 93%, and then the average for weeks five through eight is 90.8%. There were 633 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $864,000 and a median sales price of $675,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were off by 10 units or 1.6% as there were 643 single family houses that closed this week last year for an average sales price of $748,000. Now months of inventory this how we determine what type of market we're in, zero to five months, that's considered the seller's market. But the closer you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market data it is. Now, this week, months of inventory actually fell a little bit to 2.18 months from last week's 2.26 months. Now, the 2.18 months this week is compared to the 1.77 months this week last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to say that if you are thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, onto the condo market stats. We now have 2,811 condos on the market as of Monday. This means that there is 9.6% more inventory on the market today than the inventory levels just 28 days ago. When was the last time we had this much condo inventory on the market, you ask? Great question. It was the week of October 24th, back in 2022. 
We now have 497 more units on the market today than today last year, 326 more units than compared to the inventory levels of 2022 and are 233 units short of the inventory levels of 2021. There were 583 condos that came on the market last week with that four week rolling average of 506 units. The 583 units listed was 84 units or 16.8% more than the 499 condos that came on the market this same week back in 2023. New listings were higher than last year, but under agreements, they fell short. This week, we put 459 units under agreement. Now this 459 condo sales was 17 units or 3.6% less than last year when we put 476 condos under agreement. That four week rolling average for under agreements is 443 units. So 16.8% more listings that came on the market in the condo market they compared to last year while selling 3.6% fewer condos. That is a pretty substantial imbalance right there. Now the condo pendings to new listing ratio was 74.6%. This is compared to 71.6% that we saw this same time last year. Now the average for that last four weeks is 94.7%, which is compared to 84.2% for weeks five through eight. Now there are 319 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $711,000 and a median sales price of $560,000. Now the same week last year, there are 302 condos that sold. So sales levels, they were down by about 5.6%. Months of inventory fell to 2.53 months from last week's 2.64 months. This is compared to the months of inventory levels of 2.11 months this week last year. We have seen months of inventory down in the single family and the condo market. And it's normal for this time of year. So don't get too crazed about that stat, but just realize year over year it is up. Hey, Jeff, you do me a huge favor. Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just does a huge difference for me and the channel because it just plays with that YouTube algorithm. And while subscribing, if you're enjoying the content and want to know more about Massachusetts real estate, then that one doesn't hurt either. So please consider subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates. When it comes to interest rates, we've been relatively flat. Yes, last week they were up slightly but when you look at it from a month perspective they're flat 0.01 percent not bad but we the consumer price index on wednesday this is going to be an interest rate market mover if it comes in at 0.1 percent then rates i believe will go down it will give cover to all those people that are hoping and praying and while well, thinking that the fed is going to cut in september if it's higher then i'd imagine rates to go up i know they goose these numbers but I think it's going to be higher. Yes, energy prices should be down, but the shelter cost I foresee is overshadowing that decrease in energy uh, costs. Did you see this? 86% of consumers say it's a bad time to buy a house, according to Fannie Mae. Now, consumers cite a lack of affordability as that reason why. The percentage of consumers who said it was a bad time to buy grew from 79% in April to 86% in May. Meanwhile, the Fannie Mae Own Purchase Sentiment Index decreased two and a half points in May to 69.4, which marked an all-time low. It's staggering that only 14% of consumers said it was a good time to buy, which is down from 20% last month. Now, the amount of consumers saying it was a good time to sell on home actually fell as well from 67% to 64%. So in one breath, consumers are saying that it's an awful time to buy real estate, but in the other breath, let's have the conversation that homeowners are now sitting on 17 trillion 17 trillion dollars in home equity american mortgage holders now have access to 11 trillion dollars of tappable equity this is a record high for u.s homeowners listen to these stats the amount of equity is so huge that if all 48 million american homeowners spent 10 million dollars of their tappable equity a day it would take nearly 3,000 years to exhaust it or here's another one the equity is equivalent to 12.1 million tons of dollar bills it's more money than the gdp of japan india and the uk combined i wonder how many people said it was a bad time to buy in the late 70s and early 80s if they kept track of this data back then like we do today then i would think it would be even worse in regards to how many people would say it's a bad time to buy i mean interest rates were near 20 percent in the early 80s i bet those homeowners who bit the bullet and bought when everyone else said no are pretty happy they did so right now. Or maybe it's the kids who are selling mom and dad's house who bought in the late 70s and early 80s that are pretty happy. Here's the point. Your viewpoint shouldn't be a short period of time when buying real estate. Over the long run, there isn't a better investment out there. And no investment provides you intangible benefits of being able to live in it. 
gets you yearly tax advantages and gives you the pride of ownership like owning a house does. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're considering a buying or selling in the next night or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I would truly appreciate you passing along my contact information as it would be a true pleasure to help you. You can visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.